Hi there everyone, welcome back to Dandelion Delphi Tutorials. We are going to look at the final of 2019 question 1. And grade 10s at the end of a year, you will be able to do these questions. But 11s and 12s should all be able to do question 1 of any final exam paper. So here's question 1.1 of the final of 2019. Look at this question, try it yourself before you look at the answer that comes next. So to some learners, this was a little confusing. They say declare a constant variable. And a constant is actually a variable. Variable just means that it's holding a value. And you are able to declare a constant as a local variable. So you had to declare your own constant variable, whereas in previous papers, the constant was given to you. It's important to store your input as the correct data types. So if you have a look at the value here for input for the number of pizzas, pizzas ordered, make sure that you declare an integer variable for this, as marks are specifically allocated for data types in our declaration of variables, as well as how you get the input from the user and store it. You would see that bullet 2 tells you to declare two variables, one for the number of pizzas would be your integer value, and then the amount due, and you're going to multiply the number of pizzas with your constant. So therefore, that variable needs to be a real data type. So here, I declared my constant variable, price, and I set it to 14.95 as per the question paper. And here's my integer variable for the number of pizzas, and then my amount that the person will owe as a real variable. Remember, for input from a spin edit, you can use dot value. Dot value has an integer data type, so therefore you don't need string to int to take the value from the spin edit and place it into an integer. Then we had to calculate the amount by using the price. It's important to use your constant here and then multiply it by the number of pizzas that the person ordered. The next part of the question asked you to change the font size of the label to 20. If you're unsure how to do something like this, go and click on, for example, the label in this instance, and then you will have your font property in the object inspector, and there's a little plus next to it. So that means my code will be lblq1 underscore one dot font and then dot size. And then an assignment statement and this value here is what I will assign the 22. So it will be assigned to 20. Remember, no changes made in the object inspector will be marked. So you have to code this. So this is what this line of code was doing here. And in the next line, I am displaying the amount as a currency. As you would see on the screenshot, there was a RAND symbol as well as the question paper asked you to do so with comma 10 and comma 2 there for the two decimal places. So our question 1.1 is typically our easiest question. Now here is question 1.2 and we are often asked to apply a given formula using Delphi code. So in this question they are asking you to assign a value of 4 to the variable for side A. So that would be that value there. So since it is 4, I would declare that variable as an integer. Then they said we have to extract the length for side B. Now that just means get input from the user from the edit named edtq1 underscore 2. To determine which data type this variable needs to be, you need to look at the screenshot here at the bottom and you'll see there it says 6.5. So therefore side B will be a real variable. And then you need to apply this formula to calculate side C. And remember, the square root, that's what we're going to use here, the function square root, always returns a real value. So the result of square root is real. So therefore, C will definitely be a real variable. And then you are required to display the output in a panel. And a panel has a dot caption property. They did tell you here that you have to format the output to one decimal place, 
but you would have to do that even if the question does not ask you to but it shows you here in the output you see it's showing only one decimal point and you want to match this output exactly press pause and do it yourself before i show you the answer so here's the memo for question 1.2 i have my two real variables and then i have one integer and i'm assigning four to side a and then i'm getting input from the user from the edit box remember to string to float and store it as side b and in here i am applying the pythagoras formula using my delphi code remember we have square root sqrt and we have square of each side so on the inside of square root i'm adding the square of both these sides and i'm storing it as my real variable rc <coughs> It's very important throughout your paper to use float to string F as somewhere in the paper there will be marks allocated for using float to string F with its four arguments. The first one being your variable that you want to display, then either FF fixed or FF currency. You can stick to 10 because that's just the space available for this number to be displayed. And then it was very important to have a comma one at the end because only one decimal place is displayed in your panel. Now it's your turn to try question 1.3 and take note of every bullet where it explains to you exactly what you need to do. For example, here the one and the 100 is included in this random number. Also have a look at the top here where they tell you that I lowest a global variable was declared and initialized for you and you are required to make use of that. So here's the first example of output. Now the first number that you are going to pick might be lower than the current lowest value so that is I lowest was set to 100 so the possibility of it being lower is quite high. But when you click this button, it won't necessarily display 42 in the rich edit. It will be your random number that was selected when the button was clicked. But the lowest number so far should be displayed here in the edit box. And here's the example of output after the button was clicked six times. And you can see that three is now available there in my edit box. Press pause and try it yourself. I'll show you the memo soon. When you open a program for the first time in an exam, just push F12 to see what code has been provided. And in this instance, our lowest was declared for you as an integer. And on top of that, we have the value of 100 assigned to our lowest in form on activate. So the declaration of our number was also given. So you can just use our number as your random number. And then I used random range from 1 to 101. Remember, the second argument is excluded. So this year, we'll pick random numbers from 1 to 100, as the question asked us to do. And then we were required to just display that number in our rich edit. In my if statement here, I'm determining if the random number picked just now is less than the previous value stored in I lowest. And if it is, I overwrite I lowest with the current random number that was picked. Be careful not to redeclare your I lowest here as a local variable, as you will lose that global value that was stored with the lowest value in it. And then you had to display this lowest variable again in your edit box. You were not allowed to use your edit box here to compare. You had to use the variable I lowest to compare and find the lowest value picked so far. Here is question 1.4. So in a question one, you can always expect something that is asking you to make use of string handling. And this is what this question is doing. So at, in the example here, you can see this is given and then this must be my output so an 8 represents an i and a 4 represents an e and you can ignore all other characters besides 0 to 9. here are the instructions at the bottom in the bullets you're using an input box to enter the sentence i suggest that you use this here as the default value in your input box it just helps you to 
to speed up the processing and testing of your program. So if they said get input from the user making use of a dialog box, that would also mean an input box. Then you had to replace every digit with the alphabet letter that corresponds with it. And then you had to display the descriptive string in a message box. You could just use a show message for that. And once you've tested your string with these values, make sure that you test them for these input and output examples as well to make sure your program's working correctly. There are many solutions to this question that could score you full marks, but here are two of my solutions. I have declared a constant here, setting the value of sNum to 0 to 9, and then a char string from A to J. So position 1 of the number corresponds with what it needs to be replaced with. Here's my input box, and this is where I recommend that you use the example of input and output on your paper to set the default value here as the third argument of your input box. That will just speed up the testing of your program because you don't have to type this every time you run your program. Here I'm now looping from 1 to the length of S input. So let's take this as an example. The first time I'm looping K is 1. So I'm trying to find T because that is this character here. That's when K is 1. I'm trying to find T now in S num. So I don't find it and therefore this part is not executed. And now I loop again. So now K changes to 2. This time, S input square bracket K, so K is 2, is now 8. And when I search for 8 in SNUM, I will find it there in position 9. So now I pause here, is 9. So now I test, is pause greater than 0? Yes, it is. And I am taking the character in position 9 of S char, and that would be I, and I'm replacing, so this here is going to be I, and I'm replacing the current input in S input 2, because we remember K is now 2, where the 8 was. I'm replacing the 8 now with that I. And so I loop through my whole string, and only if it is a number I'm going to replace it with its corresponding character that's in this string here. And all I had to do here was display the output in a show message. Here is an alternative solution to the same question, getting input from the user. You would have to initialize S new because I'm here, I'm building the string. And remember, if the variables on both sides of the assignment statement, we need to initialize it. And if there's a loop, we'll initialize it right above our loop. Here yeah, I'm still looping through 1 to the length of my input and I'm using a case statement because this year is a character. And if I find a number 0 to 9, remember this is now no longer an integer. These numbers are now strings, so therefore they need quotes around themselves. I'm now building a new string with the corresponding character. Else, if it's not a number from 0 to 9, I'm just adding the input from the user that specific character as is, whether it is a letter from the alphabet uh, or maybe an exclamation mark in our example or a space or any other character besides the number 0 to 9. This takes a bit longer maybe to code, but this would also be a solution that would score you full marks as long as you still now have your show message here displaying is new. Thank you for watching Dandelion Delphi tutorials. Please leave some comments and I hope to see you soon.